So one of my all-time favorite savory snacks is the croquetten or the Dutch croquette. So you have a nice crispy outside uh, layer with a soft and gooey uh, meat of your choice basically inside. Typically beef or chicken or sometimes shrimp. But yeah, nice hearty snack. So I'll run through the steps. First, uh, the ingredients for making your stock. One medium onion, one large carrot, two stalks of celery. And your meat can be a beef uh, sirloin tip steak or a roast or any other uh, fairly inexpensive uh, cut of beef. Salt and pepper, butter, and some cooking oil. You can either use homemade stock or I'm using a store-bought uh, beef and red wine stock that uh, seems to work well. But yes, you can make your own stock, which I sometimes do. Here you can see the weight of the beef. Typically a one and a half to under two pounds uh, is appropriate amount of beef for this recipe. So step number one is to cook the beef and make the stock. I add a little bit of cooking oil, in this case a little bit of olive oil, and about a tablespoon of butter. So some people just cook the beef uh, just in water to make the stock uh, with vegetables. Um, I like to see, lightly sear both sides of uh, the sirloin tip steaks just to give a depthness of flavor to the stock. Okay, so just, you know, under a minute each side just to give it a light sear. This doesn't take very long and it does add a nice uh, touch of flavor. Now in terms of what cuts of meat, you could use a pot roast, um, a sirloin tip roast, um, you know, any less expensive typically uh, cut of beef is used, stewing beef, something like that. And again, you can use leftover uh, roast as well. But this is cooking it from scratch, so this is a step one of a three-step process. And this step one takes roughly one and a half to two hours. You're just cooking the meat through and uh, making a stock, so it doesn't take too long. It's good to have a cast iron Dutch oven or uh, a large pot to do this in. I guess you could technically do it in a slow cooker as well. So I'm adding my just under one liter of beef stock. And this is really all the liquid you need. Uh, you'll see later on uh, it's an adequate amount of liquid for the making the roux which is your mixture that goes uh, that is the filling for the croquette so I'm just adding back the pieces of the beef and the celery and onion and um, carrot will add a bit of moisture as well and flavor and you could certainly add your own uh, herbs and seasonings this is a very simple stock I didn't want to impart too many other flavors, just uh, mostly a beef flavor, savory. So I'm adding a touch of pepper here and a touch of salt, roughly an eighth of a teaspoon probably of each. And you'll want to cook this on medium at first uh, to kind of bring it up to a simmer and then back off your heat down to a roughly a medium low. But you want to maintain you know, a low simmer for the good hour and a half to two hours. And after two hours, I've turned the heat down and I'm taking my beef out. And you're going to set that off to the side to cool down because you're going to be slicing it and dicing it uh, really fine. So give it a chance to cool down so you can handle it a little bit easier. And in the meantime, if you have a colander and a pot, you can uh, strain off the vegetables, which we're not going to use. We're just going to use the stock.
All right, step number two is making the mixture or the filling. So you have to start by uh, finely dicing your meat. It is nice and tender, it's not too hard to cut. The problem is you want it really finely diced, so it does take a while. First I cut it kind of coarse, and then I, uh, I just keep chopping it until it's into a, a very fine uh, dice. You kind of have to do that because this is your, your filling and uh, has to be fairly consistent and uh, easy to eat so you don't want any big chunks in there and there's your end result and the stock to the left there so I'll go over the ingredients for making the filling as well so you have your stock you have your beef finely diced you have one medium diced onion I just happen to have a purple onion this time eighth of a teaspoon of pepper, eighth of a teaspoon of salt, 100 grams of butter, one cup of flour, some thyme, some nutmeg, and parsley. So there's a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and thyme. Uh, some people don't like the taste of nutmeg, but uh, it's not a, a large amount and it adds a nice flavor. So um, feel free to omit nutmeg and even thyme, and uh, you could use sage or something else as well. But uh, this flavor combination, the spice combination, is pretty good. So, so we're going to add a tablespoon of butter, and I use kind of a, a, a almost a wok-shaped uh, pot because it's uh, easy to work with. It's uh, nice and open. So I'm just going to partially cook my onion, uh, finely diced, and you just want them kind of translucent and soft. So you know pretty much a minute, minute and a half, you're done. You don't want to take it out, put it off to the side to be added uh, later on. But yeah, you just want to soften them up. So you're going to add the rest of your butter. And I do turn down the heat here because it is going pretty high. But basically you want to let it, uh, let the foam subside a little bit before you add your flour. And you add a little bit of flour at a time and you start stirring it in. Your goal here is to create a roux and to make sure that you have no raw flour left over. So you're, um, you are cooking the flour and uh, you'll see that the moisture content of the butter is gone and it's been absorbed into the flour. And you know this takes a few minutes but basically you're making sure that all this flour is cooked before you add your stock. So just keep moving it around. You'll end up with somewhat of a kind of a rough sandy consistency. You don't want to have your heat too high, just enough to cook the flour. And you're going to add uh, one ladle at a time at first uh, of your stock. And that gets absorbed into the flour. And just keep doing that. takes a lot of stirring and a bit of patience but uh, you'll see that you end up with kind of like almost a gravy type consistency at, at the end and you can see we're still thick but we're going to keep adding stock but yeah, you're working out any any lumps of flour, making sure it's nice and smooth. And if you've ever visited Holland or plan to, um, in the big cities they have what's called auto mats. They're like vending machines that are in built into the walls of um, storefronts, and they serve uh, all kinds of heated foods and treats. And this is one of the most popular, so I encourage you to try that out sometime. So bitterballen and croquetten are basically uh, the same filling and the same crust, just in a different form. So bitterballen are ball-shaped, and these are log-shaped, basically. So that's pretty much the difference. Okay, so I'm adding my 
dried parsley. And this is kind of the consistency that you want. It's almost like a, a really thick gravy. Now in some recipes they use sheets of gelatin, but uh, it's not really that easy to find in our area. So I don't use that, but uh, that does make things come together a little bit better um, in terms of consistency. But uh, yeah, we don't have a lot of that around here, so we're making do. So I'm adding my other ingredients, salt and pepper. And now we're adding our cooked onion. Just work that in. And then finally your beef mixture. Now this is uh, admittedly a fair amount of beef that I'm adding. Usually uh, it's around 650-700 grams and I obviously was over 800 so it, this this mixture is pretty beefy um, sometimes it's a little bit thinner and um, but it, you know it doesn't really matter too much it's the flavor that counts so this one's a little bit thicker than your typical mixture so we're going to transfer the mixture to a container and it's going to go in the fridge for a minimum four to six hours, but preferably overnight. Uh, usually this is done in kind of a two day process, but uh, you can certainly do it in one day. But you want to have it nice and cold when you're forming your shapes of uh, logs for the croquette. Because uh, if it's soft, it's very hard to work with and hard to bread. So it has to be nice and cold. So just kind of even it out. Sometimes they put plastic wrap on top, but uh, this time it's just a lid. And when you take it out of the fridge, um, make sure it's nice and dry too. Sometimes it has a little bit of uh, water sitting on top, but uh, just pat it dry with a paper towel. Okay, so just even out the surface. So for step three, we're going to make the croquettes and deep fry them. So our beef mixture, you can see off to the left there, is nice and cold and it's going to be easy to handle. So we have three large eggs. We have plain bread crumbs. So one cup of panko and one cup of regular is what I do because I like uh, they tend to work well together when they're mixed. Two cups of flour. And in the meantime, you want to heat up your oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius. And there's a setup. You have uh, a place to put them once they're fried. I use a big strainer and some paper towel. Okay, so you have three trays here. You're going to be breading them. So I have flour, the egg wash, and the breadcrumbs. Again, a cup of each, uh, panko and regular breadcrumbs. Make sure there's not any spices in your breadcrumbs. And then to the right there, you can see a container to place them in once you've coated them. And on the bottom left there, you can see just a little cutting board. And basically what I do is when I roll it into a log here, um, what happens is the ends get pointy. So I just kind of bang them against that little cutting board. Or you can do it with your hands, but just to kind of flatten off the ends. And we're going to roll in the flour first and then shake off the excess and roll it through your egg. You can also use three bowls, but 
the trays, uh, nice long trays, uh, I reuse these and they work well. So whatever works for you. Everyone has their different methods for breading. But the setup seems to work well. Either way, I make a huge mess like I normally do. But yeah, you want to have a nice coating. Don't leave any part of the croquette uh, exposed because that could create uh, some problems when you're deep frying. Basically, some of the filling will come out if you don't coat everything in the, the breading. And you roughly want a little bit bigger than a, a golf ball size for medium-sized croquettes. These are medium to large croquettes. You can make them smaller as well. The longer you work with this mixture, the heat from your hands makes the mixture uh, harder to work with. So the quicker you can go, the better, or the colder the mixture, the better. You'll find that everything sticks to your hands, and it's uh, so you, you want to do this fairly quickly. The reason I use two different types of breadcrumbs is I found that the finer breadcrumbs stick well to the croquette mixture, and then the addition of the panko, which is a more coarse uh, breadcrumb, gives a nicer crunch. So. I think the two of them work well together, but by all means you can use one or the other. It's just I like to combine them. I always like to try some different things to see if it turns out a little bit better. So I've sped this up a little bit. And uh, I think at the very end I had just enough to do like a, a bitter ball. So you'll, you'll see that uh, later on. So this is one of those recipes, you know, it is time consuming. It's not something you make every day. Um, it's not exactly too healthy because you are deep frying and uh, there's lots of butter and, and fat. Uh, so yeah, you, you don't want to eat this all the time, but it is a nice treat and people love when you make it. So I encourage you to try it. And I actually do have a little device that uh, has like a little hopper. And you put the mixture in and it extrudes uh, out of three holes uh, the shape of a croquette. But I didn't want to use that for this video because it's uh, pretty hard to get. And uh, I wanted to show you how to make it by hand. But that is an option as well. There, there are little machines that help you make the log shape. And usually croquettes are served on like a, a nice uh, loaf of uh, whatever type of bread you want. And typically a, a, like a deli mustard. And sometimes with a mahi. So my favorite is to have it on a slice of bread with some mahi and some deli mustard. So the oil is all ready to go. There you can see my setup. I have a strainer, a long uh, colander strainer in the sink. And there's uh, my little bitter ball. You don't want to overload your basket. I don't have a very large deep fryer obviously here. So I just put in three at a time and that seems to work well. So it doesn't take long. Don't forget this is already basically cooked. Um, so you're just going to go for a minute, uh, a minute and a half maybe. And some people like them darker. I like them kind of medium brown. So this is kind of uh, the color I like. But you can certainly go a little darker. And you kind of have to be careful handling them because they're kind of floppy at this point. And you don't want to mess up the shape. So just take your time. Now obviously you're cooking with hot oil, so just take all the safety precautions. Have your exhaust fan running because uh, your house will definitely smell like deep frying foods uh, for the rest of the day. So, but yeah, it doesn't take long, much longer than a minute to a minute and a half. So, uh, do not walk away from the, your stove. So that's not quite done yet. Put it back in. Probably for another 15-20 seconds. It doesn't take long. Now some people will make the croquettes 
before they fry them, they'll, they'll just freeze them for and fry them at a later date. So that there is that option as well. So that container that you see off to the right there, you would just uh, freeze that. And then on the day you want to serve them, you can fry them so they're nice and hot uh, and ready to serve. But these do freeze well anyway after you uh, make them. So either way, it's nice to have. Again, it's nice with uh, a nice uh, deli mustard. And that's what they turned out like. Again, some people like them a little bit darker, but uh, I find this is just perfect. And again, these are fairly meaty, so they're not that gooey inside. Sometimes uh, if you make the gravy a little bit lighter in consistency. But uh, yeah, it was very tasty. And I encourage everyone to try it out. It does take a while and hopefully the video helps you through the steps. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next videos and please subscribe. Bye for now.